Today we're going to discard the dinosaur decor of this flea market find Hartkey VX115 base cabinet while refurbing it with a modern twist. I found this gem at a flea market. It was an impulse buy, I admit that, but I was able to test it out before shelling out only $30 for it. At that time, I felt like it was a good deal. I mean, it just needed a little clean up and maybe some paint on that grill. What you don't know is that back home, I already have a Heart Key 115 cab. I thought putting these cabinets together would make a sweet base stack. I was mistaken. Turns out my XL115 cab is about 1 and 3 quarters inches narrower than the VX115 Dino cab. Sure, you can fit one cab on the other, but it's going to look dumb if the sides don't line up. Plus, the heart key interlocking corners are not going to align on both cabs. So let's calm down and do a full evaluation of the cabinet's condition. So the carpet covering, it's pretty dirty as you can see, and it's coming off in several locations. The good thing is that there are no rips or tears. Now the evidence supports that there may have been some plastic corners installed at one time. I don't understand how these handles got so dang dirty. The handles are plastic and both have cracked. These casters are not original, and they aren't too spiffy looking either. Well, I guess that's it. I can't think of anything else that would be considered undesirable. I had a simple plan to clean the carpet replace the corners and casters, fix the handles, paint the grill, and call it a done deal. The first step was to take the hardware off. Does the hardware look abnormally rusty to you? Yeah, it does to me too. Now, taking off the handle revealed a little surprise. It's two pieces. I wasn't expecting that, but the two-piece design will make it easier to repair the cracked handle. The bottom of the cabinet's pretty nasty. We'll see if this small handheld vacuum with a motorized beater will do the trick. It's certainly getting the sand and dirt off, but that turd stain is being stubborn. But not stubborn enough for the almighty bristle brush. This cabinet is full of surprises. Removing the Gorillasaurus Rex exposed what can only be described as a beach baffle. Where did all this sand come from? And why is that sand concentrated at the bottom of the baffle? I'm starting to think my $30 purchase might not be that buyer's bargain I thought it was. I wasn't planning on removing the speaker, but I ended up doing so for a couple reasons. I wanted to clean and paint the baffle because now I know it's mad dirty. I also heard something clunking around inside the box when flipping the cabinet around. Hey look, it's an old school projector slide. That certainly was not making the big clunk sound I've been hearing. Going back in yields more findings. It's a batten block which goes on the inside corner of the cabinet. And an hours meter? In case you were wondering, this cabinet has low time on it. Let's peel back some of that carpet. Gosh dang it looks bad in there. Notice the carpet comes right off. There is literally no adhesion. Just check out those MDF filler blocks. They are completely swollen from moisture. Luckily, these were the only MDF pieces and their only function was to support the grill. I can replace these. At this point, I came to the conclusion that this puppy was left outside during the monsoon season. It's the only explanation for all the unexpected conditions. In addition to the MDF problem, there was also some delamination of the plywood. Using a screwdriver to separate the laminations allowed the glue to get down inside. I used a level and some clamps to hold the plywood laminations together while the glue dried. After repairing the delaminations, it was time to yank out the swollen and brittle MDF. Try not to cringe at how easily the MDF comes out. Luckily, the rest of the box is plywood and solid wood. I don't understand why Harky would have used MDF here. Oh wait, yes I do. It's cheap. 
It's too bad I just vacuumed the baffle, because taking out the MDF sure made a mess. I'll make some replacement pieces, this time out of some solid wood I had kicking around. I cut this little end off to show the profile. Down in the corner there's a chanfer to prevent interference with any debris or gunk I fail to remove. The opposite end is rounded over for aesthetics only. At this point, it might have almost been easier to build a completely new cabinet. I should take out the horn before gluing in the new fillers. Besides being dirty, there's no problems with it. Since any natural wood color would be seen through the grill, I painted these replacement filler pieces black. It's important to only paint the sides that will be visible because the wood glue sticks to bare wood better than painted wood. Spreading out the glue will ensure that these stay secured better than the heart key originals. I clamped these in place until the glue dried. That's it, no fasteners. Hey look, it turns out they don't even look that bad. Here I'm getting ready to paint the baffle. All of the carpet was coming off the front of the cabinet, so I taped it up out of the way and some paper towel masking keeps the paint from getting inside the cabinet. I'm using the same paint as before. It's the cheapest I could find at Wally World. Let's check in with those handles. Do you remember how crusty those things were? They cleaned up pretty well with some soap and water. Don't forget that each handle was completely cracked. Lucky for me though, the back of the handle has a half inch wide recess and I happen to have some half inch wide aluminum bar. It fit perfectly. I'll cut this down to length Sand both the aluminum and the plastic, and epoxy it into place using some JB Plastic Weld. I've had good luck with this glue in the past, and it was definitely the best suited adhesive I had in my glue box. This grill is a piece of art. I almost hate to cover it up. I'm going to use this paint removal pad that I bought specifically for this project. It works pretty good. A bit slow, but it doesn't damage the metal. I was originally going to just apply paint to the grill, but if there was ever a future scratch, I didn't want the pink or green to show through. At this angle, you can still make out the dinosaur. It's because I was unable to remove the paint from inside the perforations. To alleviate this, I made sure to apply the spray paint from four different directions. Speaking of paint, I'm using Rust-Oleum Spray Lacquer. I've used this on several projects and I'm actually impressed with the quality. It started raining in my paint booth so I had to move inside the garage. Notice that I'm spraying from different directions in order to fully coat the inside of the holes of the grill. Now as we saw earlier, the carpet was losing adhesion from the wood. I'm getting ready to spray the adhesive now. I want to mask the area to prevent adhesive from getting on the baffle and inside the cabinet. Here you can see the big gap between the wood and the carpet. It'll be important to get the adhesive down in there. What you can see here is some clear tape I'm using to prevent spraying over the flap of carpet. I tried this without the tape and the adhesive created a bunch of stringy glue hanging down and almost touching the outside of the carpet. This tape prevented that. What you can't see is more clear tape near the baffle. I taped everything off so adhesive only goes where I want it. Good coverage is important with this glue, so I did several coats. I'm using 3M80, rubber and vinyl. I had it left over from a previous project, and it worked pretty darn good. Pulling off the masking tape reveals a clean carpet edge. By now, the glue has set up and I'm pressing the carpet to the wood on the face of the box. Then starting in the middle, roll the carpet around the front of the lip, pressing firmly. You can see how the masking prevented glue overspray. Once the front face felt good, I moved on to the recessed area where the grill will fit. When you come to the corner, just lift the flap up and fold the edge of the corner into position first. Then press everything down. Out back we had some more carpet problems. The seam around the periphery of the cabinet was coming undone. You know, I don't work with carpet too much, but I found a good way to fix this. Normal hot glue. It worked great and was much faster than waiting for the spray adhesive to tack up. This step is pretty self-explanatory. Just pull the carpet back, lay down some hot glue, 
and hold the carpet in position until the glue solidifies. Don't forget to clean up those pesky glue strings afterwards. I thought I'd be slick and reuse the caster screw holes. Well, that didn't work. Here's an easy solution. Reuse the lag screws that came out of these holes. The distance between the two furthest holes on the new casters is the same as the distance between the two closest holes on the old casters. Go figure. That worked out well for me. And on the remaining two holes for each caster, I just used some regular small screws. I don't even know where to begin with these plastic protective corners. On the right is one of the few corners that wasn't completely smashed to smithereens. Just look at the color compared to the new replacement on the left. It's just terrible. And it's not the lighting, they really are that amount of not black. At this point it's also worth noting the differences between the heart key originals and the generic replacements. The replacement corners don't have the heart key logo and the screw holes are not countersunk. The lack of a countersink caused me a problem a little later, but anyways, the interlocking grooves are the same size, so that's fine by me. The original corner screws were so rusty that I had to use my paint marker to clean them up. You can see the difference here, it's night and day. Remember that countersink issue I brought up before? Well that's preventing the screws from sitting flush in the corners. I used the countersink bit on the right hole. It looks much better. The baffle wasn't the only thing that was mad dirty. Check this cone out. To my defense, I could not see the speaker debris through the crazy dino grill. So cut me a break. And a few minutes with the brush, got the cone clean enough. Heart key originally soldered the speaker leads, so it's probably good enough for me too. A little solder on each side can't hurt. Here are what the VX115 emblems are supposed to look like. Now I didn't have these because the dyno cab did not come with them. Now the new heart key amps have a nice new modern looking emblem. I thought I'd make a new emblem for my old cabinet that looks like the new heart key emblems. Designing, figuring out how to make, and making this new emblem took longer than the entire rest of the cabinet rebuild process. So that's why I'm not going to cover it here. You'll have to pardon my camera stand fail. I'm just using double sided tape to secure the emblem to the grill. Hey, that doesn't look too bad now, does it? Now let's get that grill on. I'm just using the original hardware. And here she is, all done. Now this project took way longer than I was expecting, but the final product came out pretty dang good, I think. Especially considering we started with this turd sandwich. Well, I guess that's it for now. Smell you later.